Hello, this is the second lesson of the introduction to the Big Data Applications and Analytics course. And in this short lesson, we'll just give some very general remarks about the course. Um, so many of these have been said already. This is alternatively called X Informatics, but uh, in more modern terminology, it's Big Data Applications and Analytics. And it's an overview course for the data science curriculum at Indiana University. It's motivated by applications, but mixes in a reasonable discussion of technologies. Note that this is not a, that does not have any tremendously detailed uh, use of technologies. We do some Python, use of Python, but a very modest knowledge of Python is required. Um, other than that, we actually discuss technologies, but we do not uh, try to teach you them. And these are the technologies, which are the technologies of the big data revolution, which are needed to support the any given field X electronically. And we have this rallying cry, which are now already sort of probably uh, learned. We're using clouds, we're running data analytics, we're doing a collaborative delivery, we're processing big data. And we're solving problems in X informatics. In the technology area, we go through parallel computing, clouds, and some aspects of data analytics, such as visualization and clustering. And the X informatics describe various applications and their data. There is some discussion of software, and uh, you can take this course either using Python or Java, where Python probably provides the most elegant interface, because we're not doing any large scale computing. <coughs> so the key features of Java aren't particularly used. You can run it on future systems, uh, or else uh, um, your own local laptop. You can run it on Amazon and Azure, but this is such a simple class. These issues aren't very, um, very serious. Uh, if you run on future systems, then uh, you would use um, OpenStack to do this. All right, so here we have the general structure of the course. Um, it has, um, it, it's sort of set up as a MOOC. Uh, the word MOOC can mean two things. The actual concept of a multitude of people taking an online open course, that's the MOOC concept or the MOOC business model. There's also MOOC technology. So this is not the MOOC business model. This is actually a traditional business model. Uh, you uh, pay tuition and get, um, and do homeworks and et cetera. And then you get grades and those translate into jobs, hopefully. Anyway, uh, so this is the traditional business model using MOOC technology just to deliver the class. It has 37 units. Uh, the uh, course is divided into sections. A section is a intellectually coherent uh, discussion. A unit is roughly the equivalent of the lectures, but they actually vary in length from 30 to 90 minutes. And um, in fact, there's some probably longer than that, uh, and, and maybe one even shorter than that. And um, the total time is around 38 hours. And so we're not gonna set 38 hours in the whole course, so we'll select and skip some of the sections. And I will do that as I feel like. I will. I will tell you each week what uh, le what uh, videos to watch. I will so I will use actually the uh, homework setting feature of uh, Canvas, the Indiana University um, learning management system, to tell you which homeworks to do and which like which uh, videos to do. We will also have discussion groups. I will tell you how to use the discussion group for the week. So the assignment section assigns homeworks. Videos and discussions. That's so sort of okay. Um, all right, so we're in uh, section one, the overall introduction, and it has this mechanical introduction, which is a single unit with five lessons. It also has a motivation unit, which is somewhat longer, which is sort of a variant of the introduction, meant to be a broad based motivation, telling people why this whole course or this whole concept of big data is so exciting. I've already mentioned that each unit is broken up by the lessons. Lessons are five to 15, or actually I even have, in violation of uh, the, the rules, lessons that go up to almost 30 minutes. 
And uh, those lessons are the unit of staying awake, or the unit actually of slides that are very difficult to break up without losing some um, important thread. Notice, as I said, homeworks, mentoring, which are answering questions and grading are totally separate from this lessons they use, even use uh, different technologies. In Open edX, you have uh, discussions and videos. In Canvas, you have um, homeworks and instructions, and you also have the, uh, ca the Canvas mail system, which not, which not so many people like. Um, we will uh, discuss software later, but uh, this is not a heavy software programming course. But there is some software, it's either Java or Python. Um, if I teach this at the undergraduate level, it's only Python. At the graduate level, more people choose the Java option. And that's these two tracks. And uh, we have, you can run the Java, and both of these can be run locally. Or you can run them on clouds. There is a cl the Future Systems Cloud. It's available actually either to run Python or Java, but it's most interesting for um, Java. Um, so we have some what I call side MOOCs, which are really just technology um, discussions, which um, so rather than intellectual discussions of what's a recommender engine or something like that, we have technology discussions of Python and things like that. And there's lots of lists of useful resources, but there are so many resources on the web that I'm not even certain it's worth listing them except in a few special cases. Because you will type what you want on the web and get a new set of resources every month, and I can't keep up with them. So that's uh, uh, okay. So this lesson describes uh, sort of the interactions in the classes. So if you had a traditional face-to-face uh, -face class and all sitting on chairs and desks and things, and the instructor struggling in, in fact, you're all struggling in too early in the morning to be awake, that would be the interaction. You would uh, fall asleep and and uh, every now and then wake up and possibly stand and look at the instructor or answer questions. In uh, these online classes, we do have for the uh, residential section, a face-to-face -face session, but that's actually optional. Although it's probably good to go to the first one, because we'll go through all the nitty-gritty details. Um, but uh, the interaction is more done by electronic methods, these discussion groups, and some sort of um, uh, interactive video or audio and video for the uh, online class. We use various technologies there. I'm not quite certain what we'll decide is best this semester. We've used Google Hangouts uh, and Adobe Connect as uh, two we often use, but there are other even technologies there, even supported by Indiana University. Uh, we do use um, discussion groups uh, in the uh, MOOC, for instance, the actual real MOOC. That's a Google discussion, Google community group. In this uh, Class, we're going to try using the Open edX, Open edX discussion group because we're hosting uh, these pages on Open edX. And um, the MOOC uh, uses these forums in this way and also to do peer uh, homework grading. And uh, the MOOC is, of course, totally asynchronous. In the case of um, these uh, two classes, graded classes, they're sort of synchronized by the fact that we set video, we set homework, and so um, you sort of have to keep up. Now, the online students tend to get uh, to sort of um, get behind, or actually very rarely do they get ahead, but they get behind and have to catch up. And there is essentially for the online students no penalty for being late, except you, ha you put yourself in a state of great stress, which is perhaps enough penalty as it is. And um, as I've mentioned already, all the grading is done um, in Canvas, or the homeworks are set there, or the homeworks are returned there. So all the secret private things go on in Canvas, never leaves the Indiana domain. And you sit and lose, you use the Amazon Cloud, or the Google Cloud, or the Microsoft Cloud when you use these videos. So that's sort of nifty.
in my opinion. Okay, we have a daunting slide here. It's got all the units and implicitly all the sections that we uh, teach in this class. Remember, there are uh, 37 units, each unit being roughly a lecture, 30 to 90 minutes in length. And uh, we start off with the uh, unit which we're in now, the organization of the class. They're all in a section called introduction. And the other unit in this um, section is somewhat longer, it's the motivation. It's meant to tell you, actually it was originally designed to tell you why you would enroll in this class, but somehow it got merged into the class. It should be floating off in the ether, pointing you to this class. Anyway, it's meant to tell you to stop doing physics, chemistry, biology, social studies, history, Latin, whatever you're doing, and go into big data studies, because that's where all the excitement is. Um, whether or not you um, believe that, you can still take this class. And after this, we have three units in the real introduction, which is much more pedagogical and uh, systematic. It goes through what is big data and examples and data analytics and what the various values of X are and things like that, what clouds are, etc. Now we've set the scene, we start off with our first x, which is x equals sports. And then we follow that with the next x, x equals health. Now these have been chosen carefully because I've taught this course before, and that sports and health are by far the most popular units. People want to be healthy and people, especially the uh, male students, like to watch sports. Um, and um, in the health area, for instance, one of the most popular are things like telemedicine, which slightly surprised me, and something which doesn't surprise me, all these various new uh, fitness devices that you can carry on you, which tell you how well you're exercising and things like that. Um, then we have, after those two sections, we get into um, so what I call the side MOOCs. These are the technology discussions, Python, and then future systems. Uh, this is a unit, and it has these two, uh, sorry, this is a section, it has these two units. And um, it tells you how, so uh, this is, this course doesn't teach you Python. This is just to set the scene for Java and Python, and also tells you how to use the cloud, which is called Future Systems to do that. Then after that, we uh, get into uh, another unit. Uh, Physics, physics is my home field. I got my PhD in that area. And so I'm pretty interested in that. And the Large Hadron Collider actually is probably the largest science application there is by a long way. It's well over 100 petabytes of data. Um, and uh, it also has been remarkably successful with the Large Hadron Collider discovering several new particles and uh, discoveries, in particular the Higgs boson, which is incredibly important for defining the, the basic theory of the world, why you exist and things like that. Um, that, ha that starts off also with using uh, Python and Java to look at uh, uh, how uh, the physicists analyze that data using event-based uh, event, uh, uh, analysis and associated statistics. Then we have another section describing a big data use case study. It has 51 different uh, big data uses or applications, maybe 51 values of X. And it goes through and studies those applications and how, what links them together and what common features they have. That was work done with the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. Then we go to another, what I call side MOOC, a piece of technology which is the PlotVis software, which allows you to take a bunch of points in three dimensions and display them so that you can rotate them and zoom them and things like that. This is a very common and useful thing. Now we come to another value of X, what I call lifestyle informatics, or e-commerce, Amazon, Netflix, etc. And uh, there are three units in that section. Then we go through some technology, which is done in Python or Java on recommender systems. And then some technology, which is the algorithms on clustering and other types of ways of um, classifying systems. So after that, we take a breath and go in a little different direction. We have a section here with five units. 
Our first unit is parallel computing, and then four units on cloud computing, which implicitly uses parallel computing. Finally, not finally, after we've gone through all that infrastructure, which remember, clouds are what makes all this work. So they're not sort of the goal. The goal is the making X the work in X informatics. Clouds, however, are what allows you to do this. So it's pretty important to understand it. And there are lots of jobs, of course, in that area. Then we go to another value of X, what made Google rich. And the web search and text mining and things like that. Uh, we then go through some more technologies, uh, K-means. Um, K mean, sorry, MapReduce, K means and MapReduce. I should point out the things in, whenever there's red, that means there's some software. So you can see the software here, 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 and here. And we do, uh, after doing K means and MapReduce um, formally, then we put them together and show how MapReduce can actually allow you to do K means. Then we do. Uh, Sort of one of the original hearts of Google's success, the PageRank algorithm for for deciding what the right pages to return to users are. And then after this, we sort of wind up with a sort of somewhat more relaxing discussion, no software. Uh, first, we go to what's meant to be the next big thing, the Internet of Things. They're meant to be up to 50 billion devices, uh, which are things, then we link to the Internet uh, by 2020, that's not so far from now. And um, we also discuss census, which is sort of another way of talking about the Internet of Things. Then we finally have a short unit on a sort of more related actual technology, namely remote sensing. That's typically involves uh, vehicles and aircraft with um, various types of um, Scanning devices, radar, LIDAR, and things like that, which allow you to study the Earth. Typically, in the, case, the example we give is studying the North and South Poles. So there we are, pretty interesting. And that's this course, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. We go in, of course, this is the end of um, a lesson. When we go into another next few couple of lessons, which just go through these units in more detail. Thank you very much.